Good morning. It's time for Daily Chapel at the LCMS International Center in St. Louis. The text is Genesis chapter 25, verses 29 through chapter 26, verse 5. The Reverend Jeffrey Hammer is preaching. The broadcast of Chapel is underwritten by LCMS International Mission and Ministry to the Armed Forces. A reading from Genesis chapters 25 and 26. Once when Jacob was cooking stew, Esau came in from the field, and he was exhausted. And Esau said to Jacob, Let me eat some of that red stew, for I am exhausted. Therefore his name was called Edom. Jacob said, Sell me your birthright now. Esau said, I am about to die. Of what use is a birthright to me? Jacob said, Swear to me now. So he swore to him and sold his birthright to Jacob. Then Jacob gave Esau bread and lentil stew, and he ate and drank and rose and went his way. Then, thus Esau despised his birthright. Now there was a famine in the land, besides the former famine that was in the days of Abraham. And Isaac went to Gerzar to Abimelech, the king of the Philistines. And the Lord appeared to him and said, Do not go down to Egypt. Dwell in the land of which I shall tell you. Sojourn in this land, and I will be with you and will bless you. For to you and to your offspring I will give all these lands, and I will establish the oath that I swore to Abraham your father. I will multiply your offspring as the stars of heaven, and I will give to your offspring all these lands. And in your offspring all the nations of the earth shall be blessed. Because Abraham obeyed my voice and kept my charge, my commandments, my statutes, and my laws. O Lord, have mercy on us. In many and various ways, God spoke to his people of old by the prophets. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. What a story. Jacob the conniving heel-grabbing usurper, and Esau, the red, hairy, hunting drama queen. Luther thought that the verses just before this morning's reading, that talk about Jacob's quietness and his dwelling in tents, and Esau's skill in hunting and his prowess in the field, meant that Jacob was attentive to the word, this was his quietness, and his dwelling in tents was a willingness to hear and receive the sermons of the patriarchs. Esau's skill in hunting was not a commentary on his manly ability to provide for a family, but according to Luther, a preference for the things of the world. Eventually, Esau's inattention to the word causes him to despise his birthright. This little story this morning lends credence to Luther's theory that Jacob had been far more attentive to the Word and Esau to the world. Esau's despising of his birthright didn't happen in an instant. A momentary flash of hunger, a pang of thirst, it was and always can only be the product of a lifetime of inattention to the more pressing eternal matters. And yet, how dramatic. If Esau has time and energy for such Broadway theatrics, he is certainly not as near to death as he pretends. But what parent cannot recognize such childish antics? I am so hungry, so thirsty. I am about to die of what right of what good is a birthright to me. So he sold his birthright at Jacob's insistence. Sell me your birthright. Swear to me. And Jacob gave him the red stew he so longed for. And so Moses records, Esau ate and drank and rose and went his way. Thus he despised his birthright. So the prophecy given to Rebekah proved true. 
two nations at war, two ideologies, two pieties. One shall be stronger than the other, the older shall serve the younger. And the Edomites rent, went and lived in the red sandstone south of the Dead Sea. They would be an impediment, a roadblock to the fulfillment of God's promise to Isaac that this very land he would give to his offspring. An impediment, but not prevention altogether, as the Israelites eventually passed into the promised land. In Greek, the Edomites were known as the Idumeans from whom came scared and murderous King Herod. But by then, the prophecy was fulfilled. Not even putting the sword to all the boys of Bethlehem could stop the weaker from usurping the stronger, the newborn eternal from toppling the regime of the temporal. But who is unlike red, hairy, hard-working Esau? Who has not paid more attention to the cares and pleasures of life, the pursuit of productivity and worldly conquest, even within the structures of the church, than to the simple quiet time in the tent with the Word of God? Oh, even the atheists can enjoy a day off of work. Inattention or boredom with the Word is clearly not holding it sacred or gladly hearing and learning it. Momentary inattention to the Word does not become immediate atheism. It grows slowly over time. Spiritual sloth eats away at faith like a cancer. Inattention grows into indifference. Indifference becomes apathy. Apathy becomes antipathy. Repent, Edomites. Learn to blush in honest repentance instead of growing red-faced in anger or aimless agitation. Instead, be like Jacob. Attend to the things of God more than the things of the world. Let the first moments of every day be devoted to the unproductive reception of the Word, the submission to a to-do list not your own. Before the field and the hunt, there must be tense and quietness. Be like Jacob. Be like Jacob, even in wanting what has only been given to your elder brother. He does not despise his birthright, but delights to give it away freely. He will labor in the field, sweat and bleed in the garden, gasp for air and die on the cross. But what use is a birthright to him if you, his brother in the flesh are dying. You were about to die. Of what use to him is a birthright, a standing as the eternally only begotten son of the Father, if he loses all his brothers? And then, at the risk of stepping on whatever preacher gets chapter 26, let your mother dress you up as your elder brother in his holy raiment. Let his scent deceive his father. Let the gifts you bring to the Father be his and not yours. It is no deceit, but rather a holy kind of theatrics. You are playing a part, the part of Christ, and your Father is in on the ruse and yet takes great delight in it. The smell is of Christ, my son, but the voice is as of Jacob. The Father's eyes are not dim with age, but if he squints just right and looks at you through the cross, you look to him just like your elder brother. So be a Jacob. Hold fast to your brother's heel, the heel with which he has forever bruised the head of your enemy. But do not think you will win the birthright from him in any exchange of stew. Instead, gather to his table where he has labored in the tent to prepare a feast for you. Eat bread and drink not stew but wine. Eat and drink and rise and go your way. And so in the eating and drinking do not despise your birthright. In eating and drinking there is a new birthright for you, and in this birthright all the treasures of heaven, everything that was once only promised to your elder brother is yours. Salvation, life, 
forgiveness, all yours. A right standing before the Father, royal apparel, a prince's trust. Even his holy desires, his attention to the word, his perfect faith in his Father's promises, his devotion to the true holy things, all these are yours in this new birthright. You have a brother who despised your loss of your heavenly birthright such that he would rather die than let you lose that inheritance. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you for joining us for Chapel. The broadcast of Chapel is underwritten by LCMS International Mission and Ministry to the Armed Forces. To learn more about LCMS International Mission and Ministry to the Armed Forces, visit kfuo.org chapel.